Hello and welcome everybody to the end of an era. Goodbye 70s, goodbye tie-dye, goodbye really awesome disco music. Now we're moving, I'm kidding, all that stuff, lingered. it just went sailing right on through today. Tony Pena, 1980, Mod 29. Now this is something that I, I like to do, okay? The Mod 29, I have no idea what this is. The Mod 1, the Mod 2, they were broad, you know, reaching clubs that anybody could hit, forgiving, wonderful clubs, right? That's what made Tony Pena famous. But the Mod 29, I don't know what, how is this different from the Mod 2? I don't know. And I don't, and I looked, I did a quick little research online. I didn't find anything obvious. You know, you know how like McGregor and the catalogs, I'm like, this is for slow swinging elderly people, you know? This doesn't have a blurb where it's like trying to narrow it down. So I don't know what to expect from this club. I mean, it has a stiff, stiff flex shaft and it you know, looks like something that I just want to clobber on the range. So I'm excited to go into this without having a clue as to the target golfing audience for this club. And on that note, we should go have a closer look. Tony Pena is easy to recognize, starting up here by the toe in the sole. It says Mod 29 Oil Hardened. The sole plate here is a five screw sole plate with the master screw. It looks like a brass master screw in this one. The wood number right here, one wood, driver. Tony Pena's name right here in script. You can see the hole that they drilled for the shaft. Let's spin around the skirt really quick, the heel side. Uh, I see a little indentation right here for a pinned shaft or screw, whatever they use. Spinning around the skirt, I love this black piano lacquer finish. I don't know if they what they use, but it's beautiful. It reminds me of like these old grand pianos. Tony Pena, Tony. And then we have this lovely persimmon. Look at this persimmon, look at the grain on this. And then we have a four screw diamond pattern red insert right here. Moving up through the whipping. It looks like, has that been painted? I don't know, it's hard to tell. Anyway, move up to the whipping, through the whipping to the stepped steel shaft. You can see right here, it says <laughs> powerized Pena Flex S. Stiff Flex. This is my tape right here, just 1980 through 82. I, you know me, I need to keep track of all my clubs. And we have this lovely cordy grip. It says Golf Pride up here at the butt. So I guess we need to get this out onto the range and have a go. So this club looks tiny because that black paint just makes it look even smaller at a dress. It also looks like it's slightly closed. The face looks slightly closed to me. So we'll hover it and see how we do. Cordy grip still has some, some life left in it. Beautiful. Tony Pena. Feels good when you connect. So I'm going for a full on swing like I do with my modern driver. Just wanna see what happens more than anything. Hit it thin. Beautiful. There are a couple of things I need to set straight. No pun intended. On the range, I said that this sat with the face slightly closed. I was wrong. I put it down here on my carpet. I put it on my review table. I put it on my hitting mat. It sits flat. It sits straight. It doesn't look closed to me at all. So I was wrong. Something I was doing on the range made it look closed, but it doesn't sit that way anywhere else I can reproduce it. So ignore that, what I said on the range. I was wrong. It's not uncommon for me to be wrong. The other thing I said is that it does look smaller because it's painted black. And that might just be my eye. But to me, it looks smaller. Like I was comparing it to something here. Uh, that's a Pittsburgh persimmon. We want a real persimmon. I just grabbed one here. Uh, this is a McGregor RT2W. Not sure if you're going to be able to see. And I, I was looking at this compared to other persimmons and it's a normal sized persimmon. Like, just the black, you know, seems to make it disappear, make it smaller somehow. I don't know, it might just be my eye. So, comparing it, it is a normal-sized persimmon, so take that for what it's worth. If you, 
if you don't like the black paint. And there's kind of this stigma with paint. It's like any persimmon that's painted is made of inferior wood. Have you read that or seen, heard that before? I'm not convinced this is made out of inferior wood. It, the grain on the face sure is lovely. Ooh, it's lovely. The black really seems to focus my eye onto what I'm doing, especially with this red insert that shows through on the crown right here. It's so beautiful, it's so elegant, and it's so simple. Some brands hit home run after home run, okay? And every pen I've hit, I'm not sure when all these videos are coming out. Mod 1, beautiful. Mod 2, beautiful. Jupiter Slugger, beautiful. Mod 29, absolutely lovely. And I'm not sure who... Okay, give me a second. I need to sort my grammar. Does the, whom this was designed. This club was designed for her. This club was designed for him. Okay, so that means that you would use whom at the beginning. I don't know whom this club was designed for. Ha ha, mm -hmm. grammar police. I hope I'm right. I don't know whom this club was designed for, but I feel like I'm that person. And there's something about this. The black finish, the simplicity, how well I hit it, how good it feels. This club was made for me and I love it. Would I put this in my bag? Yes. Any one of the Tony Pena 1980 models, any one of them, whatever I could find on eBay, the first one, if I was, you know, going out like straight away, mod one, mod two, JS 29, pick one. All the four that I've hit, love them, okay? This one is right up there. I would probably choose grain. Like if they were the same price, same availability, I could easily take a mod one or a mod two, which I'm not sure I could get for the same price as a mod 29. I would take those because they have grain, but I wouldn't hesitate to put, I'm, I'm in fact probably going to put this in a set. You'll see, stay subscribed, you'll see. So home run, Tony Pena, all of them, beautiful. If you've played the Mod 29, I wanna hear, if you know whom this is targeting, this is targeting him, this is targeting her. If, if you know whom this club is targeting, Leave a comment in the comments below. Was it targeted for, you know, good golfers, good strikers, senior golfers, high handicappers, low handicappers? Let me know. Maybe they did target it. Maybe they just made clubs, you know, that were painted black that people might like. Tony Pena, very impressed with the whole line in the early 80s, late 70s. Looking forward to reading your comments, your experiences with this, your emotional attachments to this interesting stories that you've had with the Mod 29. If you want to support the channel, you can visit my Amazon shop in the links in the description below. As always, if you want more content, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I am The Vintage Golfer.